Brian Work. And I'm John Yugoin. And together we are Michinoku Driver. Now tonight, we're going to share with you a series of sketches inspired by stories from our lives. That's right. You see, Brian and I met a few years ago, quickly bonded over a love of professional wrestling. Maybe you heard the song that was playing. That was Brett the Hitman Hart. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> but it was really only after we actually opened up with one another, got past the wrestling, and shared our personal stories of love, loss, and regret that we became actual friends, close friends. Yeah. You know, as a society, we have become resistant to opening up about ourselves. Instead, we choose to make small talk and discuss things like the weather or your local sports teams. Brian, did you catch a game last night? No. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> See how awkward that was? Terrible. <laughs> yeah, very bad. It's so much easier to talk to somebody when you actually know something about the person. And Brian and I realize that some of you know us. And some of you may not. And even the people that do actually know us... May not really know <coughs> us. Like know <coughs> what drives us, or like our, our skeletons in our closets. Yeah, like, like they may not know about the person we were in high school that we've tried to hide very, very carefully, so nobody can see beneath this super macho exterior. Our embarrassing <laughs> secrets. Somebody laughed at that. <laughs> so, yeah. What's up? Uh, so, before we go on this journey that uh, the show is basically about us, Brian and I thought we would open up a little to you, so you can get to know us a little better. So we prepared these photo boards that all have photos that are uh, representative of very important moments in our lives. Oh, Very so we'd personal like, moments. Yes. I'd like to ask one of you to pick out which one of these you want to hear the story about from my life. The middle one. Yeah. The middle one. Good choice. Okay, so uh, if anybody cannot see, this is me in a uh, neck brace covered in blood. Um, this was after I had a really bad car accident a few years ago. I was on my way to visit a friend of mine, and I was at a place where two highways merged together, and while I assume that means you just go like this, somebody else thought that meant you cut across four lanes at once to get to the exit ramp. Um, and I swerved to avoid getting hit, which I did succeed in. However, I lost control of the car, and I was probably going about 85 at the time. You were so, at 85? It, it was in an 80. You told this story once before, and you definitely did not mention that you were in the 80s. <laughs> okay, it was, in, it was in the 80s. I was only five over. So you were speeding. Five miles per hour. That's acceptable. Tell that to the judge. I did. They were cool with it. Okay. Uh, so I lost control of the car. I started shooting back and forth across the freeway. Uh, the back end of my car hit the concrete barricade and tore it off. Um, I'm told that I came about this close to getting T-boned by an 18-wheeler. I ended up going off the right side of the road, over a 10-foot embankment, and rolled the car several times through a fence. And finally came to a stop on its side. And right about that time was when my friend who I was going to visit called me, asking where I was. And my response was, uh, oh god, car accident, bleeding. So she said, hang up, call the police. Uh, and so I hung up, I pulled myself out through the driver's side window, which was now straight up in the air, and jumped down to the ground, and a whole bunch of people were running towards me, and about half of them just stopped, because they were expecting to find me dead inside the car. Um, I ended up getting to the hospital, and the doctor, you know, they got me strapped to the board, and I'm still covered in blood and glass and everything, and so the doctor is like checking my legs, and asking, okay, do you feel any pain? Do you feel anything? Do you feel anything? Do you feel anything? My friend got there between do you feel any pain and do you feel anything. So I'm saying no, no, no. And she thinks I'm saying no because I don't feel anything. I'm now paralyzed. Um, and so, you know, finally again, the first thing I ask her to do is take my photo because, uh, of course, I did. Um, <laughs> but though, there are two kind of weird ish things about this. Um, the first is that about a week before the car accident, um, my mom had gotten a call from the Alzheimer's care unit where my grandmother stays. And I didn't know about this until after the accident because when I got back, my mom and my sisters had been on a cruise, so we couldn't tell them about it until they actually got home. And when I told my mom about the accident, she got very quiet and just sat down. And she told me that a week before, uh, before this, any of this happened, 
um, she got a call from where my grandmother was and that she was having a fit and they needed her over there immediately. And so my mom got over there and they finally got my grandmother calmed down. She said that she was so upset because she received a phone call that I had been killed in a car accident. Um, and the other weird thing about this whole ordeal is that um, I'm convinced that I was supposed to have died that day. I am 100% convinced that I was supposed to have died and somebody was looking out for me and saved me. And I know exactly who it was. Uh, it was a friend of mine who had just passed away, um, just went to sleep one night, never woke up, first year of college. And the day that I bought the car was the day that she passed away. And so I'm, I'm positive that she was the one looking out for me and keeping me safe. Thank you, Brian. Now, these are photos representative of moments in my life. Over here we have a picture of my leg. This is a picture of the cell, starring Jennifer Lopez, the optical poster. And this is my family and I at Disney World, and a happy birthday mom card. If we get someone to choose one of these. Happy birthday mom. Happy birthday mom. <laughs> This is maybe, perhaps, uh, the most shame I've ever felt in my life. Pre-adult life. Was it the bowl cut? Was it because of the bowl cut? I did not have a bowl cut. That is a bowl cut. <laughs> not looking at the photo close enough. I'm wearing a members-only jacket. This was... Good choice. Thank you. This was a long time ago, too. This was way before they became cool again. <laughs> it was like right after they were originally cool, which was right about the time when I convinced my parents to buy them for me, which is after they were cool to where the price had dropped, which is when my parents would buy them because it was cheap. And that's when that photo was. You don't have to sell me on it. Anyway, this is not about a members only jacket. This is about something far more serious. So. My family uh, and I had gone on vacation to Disney World, which is the site of this picture. And we were staying at some sort of resort. And it was my mom's birthday. And my dad looked at me and my two older sisters and said, I want you guys to go out and get your mom something for her birthday. So I'm going to give you each $20 and go into the world and go buy something for your mom, come back here, and we'll have a birthday celebration, this sort of thing. So, I get my $20, shove it in my pocket. Me and my sisters, we go out into Disney World Resort. So many nice things out there. So many. <laughs> so, we come upon like this general store, right? And uh, right next to it was a video arcade. And I told my sisters, I said, you know what, I'm gonna meet up with you uh, in a few minutes. I'm going to go check out this other place next to the video arcade, which was my way of saying I'm going to the video arcade. <laughs> so I went there, and I came upon Street Fighter II Turbo, which at that point I had been a virgin to. <laughs> and I had heard noises coming from this machine, people playing it, and I was immediately drawn to it, and I, I, you know, I had to play it. So I played it, I chose my character, Guile, of course. right? And the thing about these games is they're designed for you to put money into them. So it took me about several dollars before I learned an actual special move, the Sonic Boom. That's the first one everybody learns. And then several dollars in, I figured out how to do the Flash Cake, and I was so excited. <laughs> and by that point, I was actually winning. I was defeating people. I was so, so overjoyed. And then I put my hand in my pocket, and I had a little over a dollar left. By this point, panic set in. But, I've always considered myself very resourceful. So I said, settle down, this is going to be fine. You're going to go to the general store, you're going to buy the best greeting card you can find for $1.25, and then draw a picture in it. Something nice and personal. <laughs> so I drew a picture in it and wrote a personal message to my mom that I felt at the time was worth $20 in cash. What was the picture of? A dog. <laughs> Your family dog? Just a dog. <laughs> so, I brought it back to my, my family and I remember giving it to my mom 
And I remember uh, the whole time when she opened it, my dad glaring at me from behind my mom's shoulder, and I felt like about this tall, and I felt awful. Most shame I probably ever felt in my life, pre-adult years. <laughs> pre-adult years. Not doing too bad then. Virgin years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that where you make the separation? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys know a little bit about us, we can get on with the show. The stories are real, the sketches are close enough. And all this is our coping mechanism. Thanks and enjoy the show. Ah, oh, hello Mr. Johnson. I'm making the pots today? Sure. Oh, this is a, this is a withdrawal form. Oh, no, no, I just need a, a deposit slip if you want to make a deposit. Well, I mean, they're, they're right over there by the door. Just, if you go grab them. No, I, mean, I, I can fill it out for you. I just need the actual slip. There's a number on the slip that I, I need. If you can, if you can just get that. <laughs> Burn everybody out of the ground! Oh, everybody, oh, remain calm! Remain calm! You guys want to be a hero! You do! Put the money in the bag! Have the double on the double! Go, go, go! Roger, right? Uh, y yes. Knew it! Hamilton High! <coughs> Class of 99! We were in archery together! <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, um... Uh, forgot I had this thing on. Eh? Jerry! Uh, oh my god, Jerry, um... Cranston! Yes! yes great shooting Jerry Cranston! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nobody heard me say the last thing! Oh, nobody heard my name! Nobody heard my name! Nobody heard that! Everybody, cover your ears. Earmuffs, earmuffs. Your your my god, Jerry, I haven't seen you since winter formal. How the hell have you been? Winter formal? Yeah. God. Remember that like it was yesterday. Jeez, yeah. You were dating that blonde girl at the time, huh? Yeah. I mean, you were crazy about it. Uh huh. Meredith, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> How'd that work out for you, Raj? Worked out great. We're married now. I got two beautiful daughters. <sighs> you don't say. Yeah, I got pictures. Come on, Raj. What's funny between old friends, huh? Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> down! Everybody, stay down! So this is Stephanie, and this is Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> They've got your eyes. And their mother's nose, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> hey! What did I say? Stay down! I'm a guy! That's it! Now we're getting serious. Oh, we don't want serious. Serious, Dad. This, this is okay. Oh, okay, we don't want this rain. We don't want anything. Stay down! Stay down! I'm a guy! Down! So, Jerry, um, <laughs> how did things work out with you and, uh, Kathy? Stay down! <laughs> Said I needed to give up, give up bank robbery and get a real job. You know, I always thought she was very unsupportive of you. Thank you, that's what my mom always says. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm old fashioned, Raj. I guess I just thought the whole bank robbery thing was romantic. You know, the Bonnie and Clyde thing. Oh my god, I love that movie! I know, right? <laughs> Have you seen Natural Born Killers? Have I seen Natural Born Killers? I love Natural yes! Born Killers! <laughs> everybody! Everybody! Uncover your ears for a second. Earmuffs off, earmuffs off. Has everybody seen the movie Natural Born Killers? It is amazing! It's, okay. it's on Netflix. It instant. You guys just go home and watch it. After this, though. After this. After, after this. Murder! <laughs> Woody Harrelson is so good in that movie. You know, he's, he's like a chameleon. What do you recognize the same guy? You cannot follow simple instructions. You will not believe how many people come
come in here, they fill out a withdrawal form, they really want to make a deposit. You know, Roz, I wish I, wish I could tell you I was the same happy-go-lucky guy you remember me being in high school. The fact of the matter is I'm not doing so well. What's up, Jerry? You talk to me. I feel like... I feel like I robbed banks to fill some sort of void in my life, you know? Do you ever feel that way? Not really. I don't need the money. The fact of the matter is, ever since Kathy left me, I'm empty on the inside. A real loose cannon, like completely rudderless. A real Mickey Knox type. Oh, from Natural Born Killers! Yes! yes. Exactly! <laughs> Worst part about it, Raj, is I want to be the man that Kathy wants me to be. And I guess deep down, if I'm really being honest with myself, I question if I have what it takes to be that man for her, you know? That's just it, Jerry. You, know, you shouldn't have to change who you are for somebody else. You need to find someone who loves you for you and who shares your interests. No, maybe Kathy's not the one. That's okay. You don't need to find your Kathy. You need to find your Mallory Knox. For natural born killers! Yes! <laughs> Man, you know, Ross, I'm really glad I came down here and ran into you. <laughs> this whole thing's been very uplifting. Yeah. Maybe this is what I need to actually you know, Turn my life around, you know? <laughs> Bang! Ah! We were having a moment! <laughs> <laughs> it's a shuffle lot. Welcome to E Cupid. If you can't find love here, you never will. To create your profile, please enter your name. XT-15867. Enter location. Computing current location. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. <laughs> Latitude 42.7869. Longitude negative 72.8314. Congratulations on your new dating profile. Yay. <laughs> You're on your way to true love and happiness. At last. To complete your profile, Please verify your identity and prove that you are not a robot. I'm sorry. We were unable to verify your identity. Your account has been frozen. <laughs> it always ends like this. If you cut me, do I not display my inner wiring and electrical components? If you hold a magnet up to me, does it not corrode my data? My motherboard was right. I never should have left my home screen. I suppose I am destined to die alone unwanted like the malware that is my heart. <laughs> never to upgrade my systems. Never to convert my core processor into a dual core processor. <laughs> never to find one with compatible data ports. Never to find the Eve to my Wally. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always felt like I was the black sheep of my family, and that was never more apparent than at Thanksgiving a few years ago. Uh, there were four of us kids in my family, and my dad was saying grace, and it went a little something like this. Thank you for Mike, and all these great things that he's doing. Thank you for Leslie, and all these great things that she's doing. Thank you for Holly, and all these great things that she's doing. Amen. It's one thing when you just suspect it, but it's something else entirely when it's confirmed that you are the disappointment. Hi, I'm Brad Thompson, famous lane mogul and inventor of the catchphrase, GET A ROOM! 
<laughs> Boy, let me tell you, things have been pretty crazy since Get A Room went public. <laughs> but barely a day goes by that not at least a few people don't utter my phrase to hilarious results. Hey you, get a room. <laughs> get a room. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> but hey, you wanna know something big? Something we're working on right now back in the office. Yeah, we got big plans. Imagine living in a world where every country has its own regionally specific version of the phrase, get a room. <laughs> like in Italy, get a bit of <laughs> Or in Antarctica, whoa, get an igloo. <laughs> or in Egypt, get a teepee. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take the world by storm. Get a room. Get a life. Hi, I'm Brad's older brother, Trent. And I invent the phrase, get a life. <laughs> Shut up, Trent. Shut, Shut up. up. You know, a lot of people ask me how I come up with such a great phrase. I just tell them, it's easy when your little brother is as annoying as mine. <laughs> Shut up, Trent. <laughs> Shut up. Hey, how about this, Brad? How about you tell me and everyone here how it is that you came up with the phrase, get a room, but you still live at home with mom? <laughs> Shut up, Trent. You shut up. No, you shut up. 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 Or yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Get a room. Get a room. Get a life. Get a job. Get a girlfriend. Get a friend. Get a sense of self worth. Get a heart. Get a clean ass. Get real. Get lost. Get bad. Get a grip. Get a fist. Get two fists. Get in line. Get. In line. Get in line. We're going to be rich. <laughs> I'm John Ugalini, and we're here today to say goodbye and pay our respects to the uneaten toast from my breakfast this morning. <laughs> Perfectly good toast. Untouched. Uneaten. <laughs> Life wasted. I wish I could tell you that you were the first. And I wish I could tell myself that you'd be the last. The fact of the matter is I always order you and I never eat you and I don't know why. <laughs> now, now you stand before us just wasted potential. Be a sad reflection of the man who stands before you. A man constantly humbled with his failed attempts to have it all. A man maybe destined to never understand his own limits. Just a product of a society constantly striving for something bigger, something better, something more. Yes, I'll have toast with my moons over my hammy. Yes, I'll have toast with my lumberjack skillet. Yes, I'll have toast. With my grand slam. <laughs> when do I realize that I don't need you in my life? My life would be fine without toast. <laughs> That's right. Well, this will get all the kids excited. Man with a hat and a visor, <laughs> Texas instruments, graphs and numbers, all this. <laughs> accountant. That is my profession. And as they say, I can always be held accountable. Uh... <laughs> accountant humor.
Nobody holds me accountable for the sins I've committed. <laughs> well, this must be your first job, Bear. <laughs> Say, what is your job? What do you do? I give eternal rest to the damned. I lay waste to the walking dead. I battle the scourge that plagues humanity. Police officer. <laughs> I'm a zombie hunter. Oh. That's interesting. It's a lonely life, zombie hunting. Battling apocalypse. Fashioning useful and inventive weapons out of household objects. But you know, I spend so much time fighting the forces of eternal evil that I never bother to take the time to fight the forces of eternal loneliness. It's about time I took on an apprentice. Well, you better put your smile on, because here come the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, kids. What a lovely bunch of kids we have today. We was ready for some numbers. All the numbers under the sun, as a matter of fact. Well, look at this accounting stuff over here. Kids look like you have a sweet tooth. How would you like some pie? Got some behind the desk over here. Whoop! Three point one four. <laughs> More accounting humor. Come on. Seriously, nobody? Come on. Well, come on now. People will take an interest. The children will take an interest in your zombie hunting. Just be patient. So my wife always says, patience is a virtue. That's what your wife always says, huh? Isn't that right? Hey, you want to know what my wife used to say? Oh God, oh God, they're eating my spine. <laughs> it's a euphemism. No, it's a very fucking yes. literal <laughs> euphemism. <laughs> what are you doing? What? Trying to scare the children with your foul <laughs> language? <laughs> I'm being real with them. Well, the only thing that these children have a healthy appetite for clearly is numbers. <laughs> right oh, chart. you kids like numbers, do you, huh? <laughs> I got a number for you. 567. <gasps> Who knows who that is? Oh, he's hurt. That's a prime number. That's a prime number, right? No. Yes. No. Yes. Prime no. Yes. No. <laughs> no. That is the number of zombies I've killed. Yeah. Another turn of phrase. Expression. A very <laughs> literal <laughs> expression. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? What? Turn right. Zombies have killed? Yeah. It's what I killed? Do. You're depressing the children. Frightening them. Frightening them? Yes. No, no, no. See, this? This is badass is what this is. You kids recognize this face? I was on the cover of Slayer Weekly. The undead tremble in fear at the very mention of my name. Yes, an unused tax write-offs, tremble in fear of my shaking pen. <laughs> Who wants to touch it? <laughs> it's a gel pen. <laughs> you know what would lighten the mood is a... Uh, Who doesn't like some free stuff? Well, as a matter of fact, I have... A whole bunch of free green banker's visors right here behind my desk. Who wants one? Enough for everyone. You kids like free shit? <laughs> I got night vision goggles. I got flaming arrows. I got an orb with chainsaws on both ends. <laughs> and I have a copy of Excel. And we can go into it and we can punch all the numbers under the sun. Programs, macros, all this stuff. Screw that. I can teach you how to punch right through a zombie's face. Well, have any of your kids ever held a protractor before? It's in its fair share of loose leaf paper with its exact edges. Uh, this here axe has sheared off more than its fair share of zombie limbs. Have any of your kids ever held a grappling calculator before? The Texas Instrument, TI-85. The numbers go very high. Have you ever held a dying man in your arms? No. I wish you. your face was a Texas instrument. Punch these numbers right in your face right now. Try to figure out why you're such a mean, mean old man. But there's no saving you. I was gone a long time ago. You know, I had a dream. 
And in that dream, mankind and zombies did not live together in peaceful harmony because they are freaking zombies who want to eat our faces. All right, come on, let's go. No, no, so they are out there right now picking folks off one by one, and the only solution is for us to kill them first. So who's with me? We're going to leave. Seriously. What is wrong with you people? Do none of you realize the danger we are in? Or has the world just passed me by? Have I spent so long fighting zombies that I've become an emotional zombie? My God. Is there any room left in this world for one such as me? Oh, no! No! Ah! Oh, ah. <laughs> yep. I guess there is. No! No! <laughs> My dad passed away uh, six years ago. Um, since that time, I've had the same reoccurring dream. In the dream, uh, my dad and I are in a cave, and it's cold, and we're searching for a way out. And although we don't exchange words, I can tell that he doesn't have much time left. Um, he's shivering cold, and he's only wearing a hospital gown. After a while spent searching, I find a tunnel within the cave that I believe leads to the outside. And for the first time, I'm excited, I'm hopeful. So I get on my hands and my knees and I, and I scratch and claw my way through the tunnel. When I'm about midway through, I, I look back to find that my dad isn't following me. I'm confused. I see two legs at the opening of the tunnel, the shivering. So I crawl back to the opening and I look up at my dad and I see his face stoic and expressionless, yet filled with pain. And it's at that moment I realize that his body is too big to fit through the tunnel. That sounds like a fun drink. It comes in a pineapple? What? Three umbrellas? Yes. Please. See, Mr. Henderson, would you just bring you to come out to the bar with us? No, it's not even game to share a few drinks with your favorite history teacher. I know that too. Shh. One for my friend. You. Come on now, TJ. I may be your history teacher and all, but after school hours, I'm just a normal adult like you who likes to have fun. You're the coolest, Mr. H. I know, I know, I know. TJ. It's been a long semester. What do you say we cut loose and do a little bit of karaoke, huh? Oh, huh? It sure would be an honor if you sang the first song, Mr. H. Ah, you have to twist your history teacher's arm. <laughs> Just make sure that you listen up and pay attention. There might be a pop quiz after the performance. <laughs> Can you believe this? He's the coolest. As the Greg Winston Churchill once said, let us brace ourselves and bear ourselves to our duty so that men shall say, this was their finest hour. <laughs> so shall this be mine. <laughs> Karaoke key. Love Shack by the B-52s. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. Boy, I love this song. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition. Proposition of what? What are you doing? All men created equal. That's right. Come on, TJ. All men created equal. Now we're in the game. It's been a great civil war. Test your weather. You killed me so hard in the end. You killed it. Okay. Miss Strange. That was not the B-52s. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. No, I'm pretty sure that was the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> Come on now. I grew up with that song. You grew up with that version of that song? Pretty sure I know how it goes. I don't think that was how it goes. <laughs>
I can see what's going on here. Good. You younger generations with your attention spans, being as short as they are, I get it. Mr. H gets it. Karaoke keep, can we cue that back up from where we left off? <laughs> I think my friend here doesn't know the words to the verses of the song. Oh, no, 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 that's not it at all. GJ, there's no shame in not knowing the verses. But everyone knows the chorus of this song. Everybody knows. Even you. Here we go. Gettysburg Address. Gettysburg Address. The sign says it's the Gettysburg Address. That's the The Gettysburg Address. That's right. Dress. What the William Howard Taft is it this time? Okay. That time you were literally just repeating the words Gettysburg Address over and over again. I was certain it was not. Yes, you were. The words are right here on the screen, TJ. There's no way those words are on that screen. Well, now you're accusing a tenured history professor of not knowing how to read. <laughs> Mr. H, maybe you should just sit this one out, huh? Absolutely not. Have I taught you anything, TJ, about the power of will to persevere over all? George Washington, Delaware, cold waters that day. Yeah. Many men in the boat. It's a small boat. <laughs> As the great Aaliyah once said, <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, <coughs> Dust yourself off and try again. <laughs> try again. Aaliyah did not say that. Try again, I shall! Karaoke key! Miley Cyrus, wrecking ball! Now! Miley Cyrus? This is something even you know. This is your generation. You grew up with this song. How young do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> Ask not what your country can do for you. What you can do for your country. Ask not what your karaoke I've ever heard in my life. Worst? Yes, by far. <laughs> the worst. You've ever seen in your life? I've seen American Idol first round auditions that were better than this. <laughs> Maybe I've gone too far. <laughs> Maybe this history teacher is no longer cool for school. I can tell when I'm not wanted. I'll show myself out, you Benedict Arnold. Come on. Huh. Uh, there is just one more thing before oh no, I go. Oh no, 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 no. One piece of parting wisdom for all you know, but mix in this bar. And that includes you, TJ. Listen up. I still have a dream. A dream that my four children will one day live in a nation. <laughs> they will live in a nation where they will not be judged by the quality of their karaoke. Be it off key, off kilter. What the words are singing aren't the actual words of the song are the words that are on the screen. But when they will be judged by their character, I have a dream. Ask, yeah, no, 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 no dilly dallying around, have him right, right at my desk. Don't bring, bring two coffee, whatever he wants, and then yeah. the uh, extra whip, extra ham, extra sugar, extra just extra everything, okay? 
Um, Got it. I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. I should be here any minute. Not soon enough. Got a lot on my plate today. Is that so? <laughs> yep, completely booked. Nine to five, five to nine. You wouldn't understand. Right. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Do, do you think you know what busy is? Do I know what busy is? Yeah. I take a good hard look at Busy every morning when I make up in my mirror. <laughs> the question is, do you know what Busy is? Of course I know what Busy is. Look at you. You don't even have bags on your eyes. You probably slept at least six hours last night. And what's the deal with these Doc Martens with a button-up fly? Well, who has time for a button-up fly? Anything more than a zipper is a fool's game. Only if you're a fool. I know your type. Yeah, I know you're a type. Please. I bet real good money. If I were to step into your office, probably have a big old paper wall calendar. You'd probably write all your important notes on it like a caveman. I will have you know, sir, that my Blackberry has a Blackberry. Right. I know you're a type. I bet you still keep your contacts in a Rolodex. A Rolodex? Yes! A Rolodex? Yes! That doesn't make any sense. No, this it's day your age. Rolodex. You're the one who has it. I'm just saying. You think you're better than me, don't you? No. No, it's not at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew from the minute I walked on this bus stop, you think you're better than me. I don't think I'm better than you. I think I'm busier than you. Oh, you take that back! No time! Oh, that's it! Oh, that's it! We're doing this. We're doing this? Busy off! Busy off! <laughs> busy off! Busy off! Busy off! Busy off! Ah! How many hours a week do you work? Eight of you? Got some. <laughs> well, when's your next free day? Got an hour, two weeks from Tuesday. Weeks from Tuesday, pretty busy. Yeah. All right. You take our lunch breaks? Huh. Malnourished. Ah. Well, how many vacation days you got saved up, son of a bitch? Three. <laughs> Three months, you motherfucker! Ah. They roll over. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you sleep. No time, you. No time. The night is filled with regret and suicidal thoughts. <laughs> Left me, took the kids, never wants to see me again. Kids? Forgot what they look like, but I sent them cards on holidays. Oh, how many? Holidays? No, kids. Two. Maybe three, I'm not sure. You're not sure? I was gone a lot, they're probably not all mine. Do you have any regrets? Only one. That I, I didn't, didn't end it all a long time ago. Huh! <laughs> end it all a long time ago? Yeah, you know. Do you ever think about dying alone? All the time, you? Yeah, I already played my funeral. Got five guests, you? Including me? Yeah. Including the priest? Yes. Two. Sounds about right. How many people would miss you if you were gone, huh? <laughs> Work would fall apart without me. Work would fall apart without me, too. <laughs> would people miss us if we were gone? No. I don't think so. Just spokes on a wheel. It'll keep on turning without us. It 
say, <clears throat> you wanna go grab a drink? I can pencil that in. So I was almost engaged once. Um, there was a girl I hadn't seen for a few years and who I was very in love with. And we were taking a trip to New York, which is what she considered home. Um, one of her favorite movies was Breakfast at Tiffany's. And I knew that she really wanted a ring from Tiffany's, but she'd always told me that even if all I could ever afford was a ring from a Cracker Jack box, that she would still say yes. Um, so I had the whole thing planned out. I had called up to the, the Tiffany store in New York and I had spoken with a salesman there. And we were kind of planning to do one of the scenes from the movie where we would go in there and uh, I would, you know, have be approached by them and they would say, oh, we have this, you know, very, very nice, very expensive thing. Uh, would you like to buy it? It's like, ah, it's low in my price range. Have everything a little bit lower than that. And, you know, how about this? It's like, oh, that's still a little bit high. We have less, a little lower than that. You're going lower and lower until finally I'd say, okay, well, I have, I have $10. What can I get for that? And he'd say, well, we have a box of Cracker Jacks. And so I'd say, I'll take it. Um, he'd give me the box. I would give that to her. And inside would be the actual ring from Tiffany's. Um, that was the plan. It never actually happened because the week before the trip, I found out that she had been cheating on me. And to this day, she still has no idea that I was ever planning to propose. Because despite how angry and how hurt I was, I was far too humiliated to ever say anything. Thank you. Two drinks. Six dollars. <laughs> well, that's an awfully long face for a cherub. What seems to be troubling you, Cupid? See that over there? That was me. One magic Cupid arrow and boom, love. Ugh. Come on now, Cupid. <coughs> Where would they be without love? Where would I be without love? Where would any of us be without love, huh? Come on. I'll tell you where we'd be. Sitting right here at this bar next to me, drunk and lonely. Come on now, Cupid, don't quit on us. We need you. No, no. Uh, I think, I think it's time for me to just turn it in. I mean, take a look around. Love. Love. Oh, love. Everywhere you look, love. What about me, huh? And love out there for Cupid? <laughs> nope. Uh, nothing for me, but lonely nights and whiskey. Come on now. Or I might see a cherub that's maybe down on his luck. I see a cherub that maybe has still one more mission left in him, huh? Well, earlier this morning, I received a service order direct from St. Valentine himself that just might restore your faith in true love and happiness. <laughs> and it reads, with your quiver of arrows and your fleet feet and full heart, you'll journey into the valley and rain arrows of love and happiness over all those lonely you know, souls it's been, below. It's been over four years since my last girl relationship. You know, it's like every time I start dating a girl and I get to that point where it's like, this is it, you know, this is the magic moment. This is where the movie is right here. This is the, the place where the, the music swells and everything comes together. And I get to that point with a girl and then nothing. It's like, you know, when am I going to find love? You know, when does Brian get the arrow? Cupid. Ha! <laughs> what? <laughs> Cupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cupid. <laughs> With your quiver of arrows, your flight feet, and your full heart, you'll fly into the valley and rain arrows of happiness over all those lonely souls below, restoring their faith in true love. 
So I got a text from my ex the other day. Brian, what are you doing? I'm not going to say her name in front of everybody. Well, it's just weird, you know? Like, what makes somebody text you out of the blue like that? And look at that. Two minutes had a little bit too much to drink. <laughs> With your quiver of arrows, your feet beat, the bull high. Brian! Brian! It's just, it's weird. It's like, no, like, not weird. Not weird at all. Yeah, no, I, I just feel like maybe I'm missing something. Like, there's something else here, you know? Like, I'm. Uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. What? No, <laughs> John, John. No, I, I just, I feel like there's something else out there that I'm just not, I'm not seeing. You know, I feel like he's right in front of my face, and I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Arrow. <laughs> Brian, what are With your quiver of arrows, your three feet full heart, you journey into the valley, and rain... Arrows no, and I, I, I don't think that is something wrong with me, per se. I just feel like maybe I'm missing something. What are you doing? What are you doing? What? 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 John. Chill. Okay? I, I'm having an emotional crisis right now. I need your help. Oh, you want some help, do you? Yes, I want some you help. You want some help? Yeah. Well, here's some help. I received a service order this morning direct from your good friend, John Ugolini. And oh. it reads, with your quiver of arrows, your fleet feet, your full heart, you'll journey into the lobby after the show. Ah, you'll talk to a woman, any woman that you find appealing. And you'll talk to her. And you'll say something beautiful to her and witty, something that leads her to believe that you're interested in being anything more than a friend. Right? Yeah. And then you'll get her phone number. Seven numbers that you'll put into your phone, save it under your contacts, and then you can give her a call tomorrow, maybe. After the show, after the sketch, after the service order. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. Right here. Good. With your quiver of arrows, you fleet beaten full heart. You'll journey into the valley and rain arrows of love hey, and happiness hey John, over all those John, lonely souls. John, here, can, you, can you hold that thought? Hello. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. Seriously, when you're wearing that. Forgot I had this thing on. <laughs> Come on, Raj. <laughs> I hate seeing you do this to yourself. Get back inside. You know what I saw in there? I saw Meredith, huh? She's looking pretty good, yeah, Raj. Yeah. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Get back in there. I know. That's just it, you know? It's winter formal. Meredith looks great. It's just so much pressure you first start seeing somebody, you know? It's like, I don't know what kind of guy she usually goes for, and I question if I'm really her type of guy. Raj. Hmm. Have you seen Varsity Blues? <laughs> no. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, Raj. Jim's Ender Beak is amazing in it. Come on. Where have you been? 1997. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Blues. I know. I know. Oh, we're waiting for Blockbuster, okay? After this, though. After, after this. this. After this. <laughs> Listen, Raj. I don't want to spoil the movie or anything, but where's some blues? Here? Not a group of friends. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Except there's more of them. <laughs> drive around in them. Big blue truck. <laughs> when I play football. <laughs> That's the whole movie? No, Raj! No! 
the point of the movie is, it's not what you learn on the field that counts. <laughs> but what you learn off the field that really matters. You see what I'm saying? Winter Formal is your field. Now get your big blue truck and go get married. Huh? You're right, Jerry. I think this is just what I need to go back in there and make this a night to remember. That's what I like to hear. That's the ride I know, huh? Huh. What? I think we just had a moment.